Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Safety Moment with Aliola. This time around, we'll be talking about ISO for 2001 clauses, which is the main content, the main topic of discussion today. But before we go deeply into that, we'll give, give a quick summary of what ISO really means and what uh, Occupational Health Management System really means. ISO means International Organization for Standardization. They are, I can call them an institution that gives MSS. MSS means Management System Standards. They have a lot of standards that so many companies would conform with. What they do is that they give high level structure to, to create a kind of platform where, where a company can measure its, perform, its, its performance and where various criteria can be set in. Now, let's go deeply a bit. It's called management system. Management system actually deals with, when we talk about management system, we are talking about uh, interrelation of various elements of an organization, different elements of an organization. It can include procedures, policies, it can include the structure of the organization, the responsibilities, accountabilities, and every other forms, resources, and everything that they use to establish policies and objectives, and how they want to what, achieve those objectives. That is what a management system means. So what ISO does is that they create a platform in which various companies can measure their performance. So now we are now talking about ISO for 2001, which is part of the various ISOs that they have because they have a lot of standards for all these systems. So part of it is what ISO for 2001, which deals with us, occupational health and safety. What occupational health and safety does is that they identify risks, hazard in, an, in, in the workplace, occupational hazards that can be caused by work or work related activities and how to what how to eliminate them or how to reduce what the risk so they now create a standard to work on that will help the company in what in mitigating and preventing those risks based on management what standards so how they do that is through audits that they achieve that by auditing what do you mean by auditing audit actually means uh, it's, it's a systematic process, documented. Yeah, it's an, it's an official pro, uh, uh, process that is documented. That is what to get evidences. Various they use, you know, they, they are various documents. They, they they use they get evidences. They call it audit evidence, and they check, they evaluate to see how the company is improving. They evaluate it with a set criteria. Now, part of those set criteria can now be the ISO for 2001 that we are talking about. So that's what audit means. So this platform is just to create a kind of platform that companies can actually what, audit themselves. So it's a very wide topic, but today we'll just be talking about ISO 4001 clause. We want to identify those clauses and how it can be easy for us, maybe during audit, uh, audit system, how it can be easy for us to locate a particular uh, clause, a sub clause, and how to do the audit properly. So we'll be talking about the clause specifically today. So. Join me as we continue to discuss in the video. Thank you. You're welcome back. I hope you're following with our discussion. Now, I've defined what audit means, what management system means, what we mean by occupational health management system, and the, the overall idea of ISO standards and everything. So now, we'll be going deeply now into the, into the clauses of management system. We actually have 10 general clauses, which include the scope, the normative reference, and um, the terms and definitions, the scope of the um, the context of, of the organization, uh, leadership and commitment, um, support, operations, performance evaluation, and improvement. I kindly know that as difficult as this thing, this seems to be, it's actually very easy to understand. That is the overview of everything. Firstly, this thing falls within the plan to check out. Plan to check out actually means. It's a system that is also in use, the management system. Planning, planning your, what you want to do, what you want to cook rice. Planning, putting the plan in place. I'll buy pot, I'll buy this. Planning, do. Okay, when well, I'll be cooking, these are the things I'll be doing. I'll put water on the fire, I'll switch on the gas, I'll, I'll make sure that um, I'll put two maggi. Checking, checking if what you're actually doing, what you said you would do, what you said you will do, is actually what you are doing. Then if there's any, Maybe, okay, you say you put one, one cup of salt into one cup of garlic, for example, and you end up, after doing your uh, performance evaluation, you end up seeing that you only put, you, it was only half 
cup of salt that was there. Then your, your hack will now do what? For continuing improvement, maybe for the next process, what they are going to put in place. So that's just overview. So now let's go deep into it. Now, in the plan section of our structure, of our uh, ISO structure for 2001, the first three, the scope, normative reference, and sense of definitions, are actually one side. The main part we will start from is what? Is the fourth, the fourth clause, that is clause four, which talk, which talk, which talk about context of the, of, of the organization. In the context of the, of the organization, we have four subclasses. The first one is what? Understanding the organization and its context based on issues, maybe internal issues or external issues. Internal issues are quite common. We can understand the internal, internal issues that can, that can come from getting resources and everything. External issues can come from political issues, can come from, uh, from, from technological issues, maybe increasing technology, advancement in technology, it can come from legal issues. So that is understanding, the first thing is for you to understand the organization and its context. Now after understanding the organization, then number two, you now understand the uh, understanding the, um, the passion of workers and every other interested parties. That is understanding the needs of workers and other interested parties. After understanding the, the whole um, uh, context of, of the organization, you now need to understand the workers and what? Every other interested, interested party. That falls under 4.2. Now after doing that, then we now do what? You now understand the occupational health and safety management system. Then 4.4 now talks about the occupational health and safety management system itself. Then Coming down, the next thing is leadership. At least that is the center of, of them all. Leadership and workers' participation. Leadership and workers' participation. That is what comes in next. Because every, everything, everything that we have around is, is recycling around, is, is going around, revolution, revolutionary or moving around what? Leadership and what? Workers' participation. So, 5.1 talks about leadership and commitment. That's the first thing. So it's when we have leadership and there's commitment in the system, the, uh, the, the, the management system, the environment management system, the top management, they are highly committed, leadership and commitment, then now comes 5.2, where we now have the OH and S policy to show their what, their commitment. So after our, we now have the OH and S policy, now comes 5.3, which now talks, so the 5.2 talks about occupational health and safety policy. Then 5.3 now talks about, okay, we've, we have this policy. Who are those that are responsible for this policy? Duties, roles, and responsibilities, accountabilities, authorities. Now comes 5.3 that talks about roles, responsibilities, and what? And authorities. Then now comes the last 5.4. You know, we, we said leadership and workers' participation. So 5.4 now talks about the workers' participation. That is, kind of, um, what, what do you call it? A kind of... Uh, communication counts. Ah, there, there, there's a common term that has been used that, that I just keep my mind now. Used when you try to get advice from your workers, engagement, worker engagement, something like that. That was what 5.4 talks about. Now, going to 6, we said after leadership, then now comes what? Planning itself. So, in 6, when we are talking about planning, we are talking about uh, planning to identify risk and opportunities. Identifying what? Risk and what? Opportunities. Risk is negativity, while opportunities are a positive aspect of it. Then, the um, 6.2, um, 6 that is under planning, 6.2 now talks about operational health and safety objectives and how to achieve those objectives. So the first one talks about risk and opportunities. Now we are talking about operational health here. The first thing that comes in mind is risk and opportunity. We are talking about operational health here. So that is 6.2. And then 6.2 now talks about the objective now that we are talking about and how to achieve those objectives. That is 6.2. Then from there now goes from, so from um, that is all about the plan, the planning section. Now let's go straight to the do. No where plan, do, check out. Do now talks about support and operations. Simple. Support and operations, the actual action. Now, so in support, in 7.1, the first thing that comes into play is resources. That's the first thing that is needed. Resources that we need to make things work. Then, 
6.2 now talks about competency. Sorry, 7.2 now talks about competency. That's the, compet the competence of your workers. Then 7.3 after competence now talks about uh now talk about awareness. Awareness. Sorry, uh, sometimes I use my Yoruba language, I say awareness. Awareness. That is creating awareness in the industry about our policies, about our procedures, our safety standard, and how we want this to work out. That one is what? Under 7.3. The first one talks about what? Resources. Second one, 7.2 talks about competency. 7.3 straight away talks about awareness. And 7.4 now talks about communication. As simple as that. Then now come to operation. Operation has to do with two things. Operational planning and emergency preparedness. Operational planning and control. In your operations, just like in process safety, we have what we call safety envelope. I'm just using another example. That is your upper limit and your lower limit. That is the set point. It's your safety envelope, the, the, the parameters must be within that range. I'm just using that kind of thing. So that's the control you're talking about here. So you're talking about operational planning and control. Then 8.2, no, this is not 8 now. 8.2 now talks about emergency preparedness and response. Then from there, that is the do. We are, we are not going to check. Check talks about performance evaluation. Evaluating our performance. What is the first thing in performance evaluation? How do you do evaluation? You monitor. You monitor. You measure based on something. You measure. You analyze. And you do a performance evaluation. So your 9.1 talks about monitoring, measurement, analysis, and performance evaluation. Then your 9.2 now talks about, after doing that, your 9.2 now talks about internal audit. Internal auditing. Then last one, number three now talks about management review. These are the three things in what? In nine. As simple as that. In performance evaluation. The first thing is what? Monitoring, measuring, analyzing, and what? And performance evaluation. 9.2 talks about internal audit. 9.3 talks about management review. Then now comes the last one, the other part of them all, ACT. ACT talks about what? Continual improvement. ACT is improvement. So what are you improving on? 10.1 talks about general, the general things you need to, you need to know. Then 10.2 now, if you want to improve on something, there are some parameters you know you used to improve now. You can't just improve with your brain. 9.2. Now that one now talks about those parameters, just, just as incident, unsafe act, unsafe conditions, observations incidents so after the, we have incident non-conformities incident non-conformities and collective actions incidents non-conformities and what collective action that is under 9 10.2 then 10.3 now talks about continual improvement as simple as that 10.1 general discussion 10.2 non-conformities Incident and what? Uh, and uh, non conformities, incident and corrective actions. Those are the main things. Then 10.3 now talks about generally continual improvement, as simple as that. So, using the plan do check out to place your clauses and to understand what each clause really means and what each sub clause is really talking about, it's easier for us what, to, to be able to checkmate our system, management system with a particular standard you want to conform or want to comply with yes thank you very much for watching this episode remember to subscribe to my youtube channel i remain waliullah thank you for this moment stay blessed have a lovely day ahead thank you